in, in the past, when it was an aided school, the facilities were uh, pretty basic, you'd have to say, and it was quite difficult to move anyone in any different ways because there was no modular furniture, there was no way in which we could have things uh, run student-centered work. It was very hard to do group work, it was very hard to have student presentations. Uh, I think that over the course of the past 20 years, during Mr. Ha's time, it was the movement from uh, aided school to DSS school. Then Dr. Kennard was very strong on the global classroom, and Mr. Yun with campus enhancement. Each person has put their particular footprint on one part of uh, the school's essence. And I think that's something that goes a long way, it really uh, changes how we feel about the place. So can you share about why would you take the initiative in organizing the IAL and what inspired you to provide this curriculum for students? It starts back in really back to Mr. Ha's time but primarily in Dr. Kennard's time. It was are we going to go with the IB or are we going to go with IAL or are we going to have a GCSE and then uh, IA, IAL oriented class and it took probably that process in germination probably took five to six years because it really takes a long time to do your uh, the studies on it to uh, try to get the personnel to look at costs to look at your uh, physical plant to see if you can actually do it uh, and we eventually was decided that that we'd go down the IAL road uh, then during uh, Mr. Dennis Yoon's time is really when it started. He made the decision, we're going to go forward with this. And that was 2016, 2017. And then the first year was 2018, then 2019, and the first graduating class was last year. And those boys did really exceptionally well. So we're very pleased for them. It's like the major difference between IEL and DSC is, uh, is that um, uh, we are much, there's a lot of freedom in uh, IEL because we don't have a lot of homework to do such as uh, in DSC and we don't have other uh, subjects like liberal studies and it's sort of really uh, the teachers let us to do and uh, explore our uh, uh, interest in different areas in science subjects and sometimes our teacher may pull up some aspects besides teaching that particular subject. For example, in chemistry, our uh, lo lovely in uh, chem, chem teacher, uh, she always likes to share some chem knowledge outside our textbooks to us and really wants us to understand or uh, invest our time into uh, studying about the beauty of chemistry. So you first entered second course and you found that English is a bit of a struggle. Can you share about your experience? Yeah, because when I, uh, I transferred from the China mainland, so it's like my my English is very bad at that time, but you know, I need to overcome those challenges, so I try to like communicate with my teachers and my classmates in English and just watch more English movies and read some English books to improve my English as soon as possible. The embarrassing time is like when the English teacher is like just chat with all the students in the class, but I have no idea what they are talking about. I cannot understand what they are like talking about and why they are laughing. <laughs> so it's very embarrassing. Just like I'm not one of the classes, yeah. so I I just want to change this kind of situation. So I just try to communicate with those classmates, especially Ryan, because he was yeah. my desk mate at that time. When did it change? When did you feel that, oh, you are part of the group, you understand what's going on? Was yeah. there a tipping point? It's like about um, half a term, just a term, so I can understand what my English teacher was talking about and those, those like YouTube videos they are playing okay. like with all the English and English subtitles. Mm -hmm. So I, at that time, I finally think I can get into this English classroom. <laughs>